Hello everyone, Caddy Wampus Gamer here, bringing you another episode of Minecraft Exoria. Today's episode, we are going to get into sifting. I made this room here. I already did the episode ahead of time, and I had to re-record it because I messed up a few things and didn't include some of the information that was really important. So I'm doing it over again, and I apologize for the fact that some of the quests are already completed. Alright. I wonder if sieving the ash of this planet would give me access for some new resources. For now, a basic fiber mesh could be enough to test. Rain would mess up the sieving, but the structure doesn't need to be something fancy. Something made out of wood would be sufficient. I'm not sure if that was a pun. Made out of wood would be sufficient. Anyway, you gotta make a sieve and a fiber mesh. We're gonna need 64 ash blocks. And we're going to need all of this stuff, which I already collected. This is what you can get from the sieve. You can get ash powder, which four of those make an ash. Four ash make an ash block that you can then put back through. So they're not that common. Phosphor, which you can take and turn into lava. I believe ten of those makes a bucket of lava. Tiny pile of coal dust. Four of those make a pile of coal dust, which you can use in a machine, I forget what it's called, I want to say condenser, I think it's condenser, to get coal. Tiny pile of burnium dust, same thing for that. You can also get sulfur, niter, and dust piles. Alright, the dust piles you can take, make dust blocks, put those back through, and get different resources. Alright, so we did that. Um, I should show, let's see, the sieve is actually just four wood planks, a wood slab, and two sticks gives you that. You want to make 25 of these things. You don't have to make them all right away, but you're eventually going to want to expand to that. All right, now the other thing is the mesh. All right, and you'll start out with the fiber mesh, which is basically just nine plant fiber. Now you can start and use these if you want to, but it's just a lot easier to just go to the flint stiffened mesh, which is that first mesh surrounded by flaked flint points. So you're gonna have to flake flint and then flake the flaked flint to get flaked flint points. That right there is a tongue twister. I didn't actually think I'd be able to say all that. All right, so then you get flint stiffened mesh. Then later on, you can use that to make the iron stiffened mesh, which is actually what I have already. And you're going to use the flint stiffened mesh and iron mesh. And the iron mesh is actually six iron strands and a Gallagher hammer to get one iron mesh. All right, now these strands are actually, you get eight of those from an iron plate using the iron clippers. You're not going to be able to make the quartz clippers right now, so you're going to make the iron ones. It takes a ton of iron to actually get those 25 um, mesh all done. Now after that, there's flaked diamond points, and you can add those and get the diamond stiffened mesh. Eventually, that's probably what you want to head for. All right, so we want to automate this, and we can look. There is a quest, automated sieving. All right, now that I can collect sieved items with the vacuum, I only need to add some kinetic power to move the sieves. I have a design in mind that can auto sieve a five by five grid of sieves. But how to get the kinetic power? Water should be able to move some water wheels and I can then connect those with axles to the auto sifter. All right, so basically you're gonna make several different items. You're gonna need the stone axle first of all because that's used for the other two items. You're going to need stone rods which are just three cobblestone. Ignore the fact that this says 16. It's just a graphical thing with this mod pack. Don't know why. It's just three cobblestone will get you two stone rods. All right and then a stone gear. The simplest one to make is the one out of the five cobble. You're going to use those and make stone axles. Now the uses for those, you can make water wheels, which are planks and sticks. And you can also make an auto sifter, which is two hoppers, 
a stone axle, two pistons, four gears. All right, now the pistons actually take a tin gear, a lever, four cobblestone, and three slabs. All right, so hopefully that's pretty explanatory right there. So basically what you're gonna do is, I recess this into the floor. Now the sieves will go from one side to the other and shake back and forth. If you have a full block here, the graphics kind of glitch out a little bit. So I did steps all around the outside so that my sieves will just kind of sit in there and rock back and forth and there won't be any graphical glitches. All right, so it'll do a five by five thing of sieves. So you want it one block below those. So it'll go right here. Now you will feed items like the ash blocks or the dust blocks, it's dust, right? Yep, into here and it will auto place them in the sieves and sieve them down. Now what I did was I put my vacuum hopper up here and there is a gold chest on top of that. I'll show you that in a little bit. All right, now I saw somebody asking on Discord today and it's actually one of my subscribers was asking why it wasn't working when he was hooking his water wheels up to this. There is a difference between the two ends. All right. So when you hook these things up, you do want to start by placing this and then build off of that. It's the easiest way to do it. Let's see, I got to drop down into here, build this, and I'm not going to be able to get out of here. Yes, I am. Haha. -ha. All right, so we're gonna build this and this. Come on, let me build it. There we go. All right, you can see this starts turning because I already have my water wheels in place and check out this build. This is pretty epic looking if I do say so myself. I got pillars down this side and I got these cool fence things. These actually stack and they're really, really cool. They're kind of expensive to make. They take a bunch of iron, but it's a really nice look and I really like it. Now you do have to use the fence poles before you can build on with the iron fence because if it's not touching one of these, once you get two of them, the first one will be invisible. You place the second one and they both break up. So it's actually nice because if you break up the two posts, everything in between them will break and they're really easy to pick up. All right, so now that we have the sifter plugged in, or hooked in we're gonna go ahead we're gonna put this back and what I did was there's a thing like this where I can access the wheel if you look in the top left hand corner it says effective rotation negative five I was a little disturbed by the negative number at first and then I realized I think it's clockwise or counterclockwise so clockwise is negative and counterclockwise is positive it strains just fine even if you have a negative number no big deal all right, so what I did was five water wheels, a single brake like this. All right, you can see the axle goes through it. Then another five, and then the brake that I can walk across. This one's not connected because I want to show you something. So it's basically 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 water wheels that I can hook up to this thing. All right, so right now we have 10 hooked up. So let's go ahead and actually put the sieves in here. Ooh, and these count as solid blocks. So we're gonna go ahead and put that back there. This is now a sealed room, except for up here. And the reason that's not sealed is because I wanna show you, if I try and put down a sieve, it's gonna say block must be in a closed room. Oh, uh, this is gonna really mess me up. All right, let's seal this real quick. I took this out because I wanted to show you, if you place it in a sealed room, it'll say room is missing three exposed wood shakes blocks. All right, so this is another one that has conditions. And I guess I could have hovered over it just to show you. Say restriction block must be enclosed room of at least 100 blocks in interior size and at least 64 exposed wood shakes. Now see, I didn't read the 100 part. I'm glad I made the room big enough. All right, so we have the shakes like this. And we're gonna go ahead and fill this in. Now we can put our sieves down. And like I said, a five by five. And once this is hooked in, you'll see these have like a wooden thing. You can't see very well because of this block below it, but it is actually connected 
Like if I put this here, you can see they're actually connected. All right, so we're going to go ahead and place the rest of these. Uh, let's see, shift click on here. Now, I used shoots because they transfer super fast. And I will transfer over to pipes, but in order to get the embers pipes, which are the better ones, we actually have to have the black quartz and we need to actually be able to do a bunch of sieving in order to get that. All right, so this is hooked up. We're doing good. Now we need to go and put all of our meshes in here. So you just right click with a mesh and it will place it inside. So these, like I said, are iron stiffened mesh and we can actually look, I'll show you in a second. All right, those are all in. Oh, I should look at the quest real quick. So yeah, we did that. Vacuum hopper, auto sifter, stone axle, water wheel. That's done. All right. So that's an extra step. So let's see. Ash blocks and dust blocks. All right, ash blocks. The uses for those, if we go to the sieve, you can see we get ash powder, phosphor, tiny pile of burnium dust, a tiny pile of coal dust, Sulfur, niter, and dust pile. Now, if we go up to the flint one, it adds in tiny pile of lapis dust. If we go up another one, it adds in crushed black quartz. That's with the iron stiffened mesh. Now, if we go up one more, it's going to add in tungsten dust. All right, now with dust, we'll look at the uses for that. And with the regular fiber one, you get crushed quartz and certus quartz dust. Now if you go up to the flint one, it adds in prismarine. Now if you go up one more, it cuts out the certus quartz, but adds in tiny pile of diamond dust. So what you're going to have to do is use your iron one to get enough diamonds to make a diamond one, and then you can sieve with that and get tiny piles of emerald dust. So let's actually go ahead and grab a bunch of ash blocks. You can see I have 16,000 ash blocks. And one of the ways to get that, we'll go ahead and fill these. And this should... Hmm. Might be the way I have these hooked in. Like I said, oops. There we go. This is how fast it will go with 10. It's pretty slow. You can help it along by holding down the right mouse button. All right. Ooh. Let's get rid of some of this. But we actually, you know, we want it to go pretty fast on its own. We don't want to have to help it. So what we're going to do is we're going to run out here. And right now, only 10 are hooked up. So let's run down here to the first break. And hop right in here and place this in here that engages and look how fast these things are going now all right now when we go in here and we take the ash and put it in here look how fast it goes now now if i was to stand here and hold down the button you know it goes fairly fast now this does kind of make me nauseated like sick to my stomach if I'm in here too long just because of the back and forth that it does. Alright, so if you have problems with motion sickness, just be aware of that. Alright, so let's go ahead and do dust. Because the next quest, we still got another minute or so. I got some white dust from sieving the black ash. That is strange. I wonder if sieving it again gives me access to more useful resources. So then we need crushed quartz and certus quartz, and guess what? We are actually not going to get that because I have the iron ones. So I guess we won't complete that quest. I will have to go ahead and complete that. I'll probably do that off camera just because it is pretty boring. Um, I did close this in glass just because items are going to be flying, and that reminds me. If I put a lever... Come on, right... Uh, can't put a lever on the underside of that. All right, let's jump up like this and put the lever. Oh, it's not a lever. That'd be why. Wow. If I put a lever there, I can. There we go. 
Aha! The vacuum hopper now works. Now this, if you sieve too fast, it will actually kind of pile items up on the ceiling there. So you don't want to sieve it too fast. And I like this setup. It's pretty nice. 50 water wheels should do it. I can chunk load those and then just have this auto sieving all the time. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. If you did, tell a friend, leave a like. And until next time, this is Caddy Wampus Gamer signing off.